let's go ahead and, and kick things off. So welcome everybody to Mylio Photos Coffee Break. My name is Angela Andrew, and today I'm joined by our special guest, Aaron Predmore. He is our data analyst, but he's also an avid nature photographer. And if you were listening in on some of the conversation before we officially started, he takes some really, really cool bird photos. Um, very, very talented. So I look forward to hearing from him in a little bit how he manages his Lightroom catalog and keeps everything in sync with Mylio photos. Um, I am also a Lightroom user. I have been since version one. And um, there was one glaring problem with the Adobe ecosystem is I couldn't get all of my images on all my devices without paying for massive cloud storage. And frankly, not everywhere has great connectivity. So having to rely on the cloud to get to my images was never a perfect solution. When I discovered my Leo photos, it really um, opened up a whole world of being able to go between different devices. So my setup that I have right now that I'm talking to you from is my work laptop. Right nearby, I also have my personal laptop, which is where my Lightroom library resides. But because of my Leo, I can have all of my images on both computers, on my iPad when I travel, on my phone when I'm hanging out with family and friends, and I can always get to my images when I want or need them. So let me share my screen here on my work computer for just a moment and give you an idea of what this looks like from my work computer. And this is really for me the beauty of my Leo is here is my 2022 folder. This is on an attached external hard drive that is attached to my personal computer, not attached to this computer, but I can access everything in these folders. If I switch over to Lightroom on this computer, you'll notice I don't have all of my folders here. This is a nearly empty library that I've used mostly just for test purposes. And this is where the problem with Lightroom comes in. If you're trying to switch between a desktop and a laptop, two laptops, a work computer and a home computer, Lightroom does not make it super easy for you to keep your li library in sync between multiple devices. So with Mylio, I can get to all of those images no matter what device I'm on. So let me quickly stop sharing here and I'm gonna jump over to my other computer and share my screen and jump down to my 2022 folder. This is the same folder we were just looking at on my other computer. And you'll see everything here is the same. I've got all of the same folders. And if I go over to Lightroom, here is my massive catalog. You can see that I have everything in here back all the way to 2001. So tons and tons of images. If I go back over to Mylio and go up one level in my folders and I go back here to my photos folder, here we are again back to 2001. And I can get to this from either computer, from my iPad, from my phone, no matter where I am. And to me, that is the power and the strength of using Mylio Photos with Lightroom is you kind of get the best of both worlds and it solves that problem of jumping between multiple devices. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the floor over to Aaron and he'll show you how he brings in his images and works between the two programs and give you a better idea of how that works. But before we do that, are there any questions before we jump in? Feel free to unmute or put your questions into the chat. We'll keep an eye on that as well. All right, Aaron, the floor is yours. All right, I'll go ahead and share my screen real quick. All right. You should be able to see my screen. Uh, right now I have Miley open, but I can go ahead and switch over to Lightroom. So right now I'm working my work computer, so I only have a small set of my photos available in here, but I'll show you how I synchronize my pictures between uh, my work and my desktop computer and uh, include those um, Lightroom edits. So first I'm gonna go ahead and import some pictures. I went out this morning and took a couple pictures in the yard. Um, we'll select my memory card and import. Um, you can import your pictures into Lightroom or you can bring your pictures in with Mylio and then add them in Lightroom. The reason why I import them using Lightroom is because I also convert them to DNGs. Um, a lot of people don't like doing that. And so um, if you don't want to convert your photos to DNG, then you can either just bring them in in Mylio um, and then add them in Lightroom, or you can uh, import them directly into Lightroom and then Mylio will see them there. So now that it's 
brought everything in. It's going to go through and convert everything uh, everything into a DNG, get the, the previews and all that. Um, and while that's running, you'll see that it imported down here, which is outside of this folder. This folder is not being watched by Mylio. The reason why I do that, important to a folder that's not watched by Mylio, is because um, Mylio will automatically pull those images in as soon as it sees them, and I'm going to convert them to DNG. So it brings them in as a CR2 and then converts it to DNG, and I don't want Mylio to bring in the CR2s and then think they've been deleted on accident and try to recover them from, a, from an online vault. Um, so we'll give it a few seconds here while it finishes doing the conversion. So, so using that other like folder oil. that's not watched by Mylio, if you're not converting to DNG, it wouldn't be as big of a deal, but because you're making that conversion, having them in a non-watch folder makes sense. Yeah, right. It, it'd be pretty much useless to do it because it just means that I'd have to come in and manually drag it into here, um, whereas I could just add it and it would come into here. Got it. All right. Looks like. Got all our photos converted. And then I just drag it up um, into here. This folder is being watched by Malio. Um, the transfer happens super fast. Um, and then I would go through and do any edits that I, I would want to do. So I took a bunch of pictures of this um, black capped chickadee this morning. So I might come in here, um, find a picture I like. This one's a pretty disheveled looking black capped chickadee. And then I would do any sort of editing that I might want to do here in Lightroom. So for now, I'll just do a quick crop. And then when I want to send it over to send my edited version over into Mylio, um, there's a publish service that gets added when you install Mylio. I just drag it into there and hit publish now. And it's going to take a high quality JPEG version of my edits and it's going to send it over um, to the same location that the file is stored with an underscore display uh, at the end of the file name. And that's gonna let Mylio know that this has been edited in an external application and to show that instead of um, showing the unedited raw version. So if you then make more changes in Lightroom, do those changes show up automatically in Mylio? Yeah, if you make changes here um, after you've already published it, you just have to come here, right click and hit publish now, and it's gonna publish those changes again. So you don't it have to re-add it. It doesn't create a new file, it overwrites the old JPEG preview, right? Correct, it overwrites the old JPEG preview, um, and then that'll show up in Mylio. So if I come here into Mylio, come into calendar, and come into today, we can see all these pictures that I uh, have taken today, some of them with my cell phone, some of them with my DSLR, and we can see that this picture came in cropped. So um, if I were to go back here, I can show you what would happen if I were to change this, come back into develop. And then maybe I just wanna make it black and white. And then I can come back here and republish. And then when I come back over here into Mylio, get back out of this, um, usually it takes a minute or two for it to figure it out. There we go, we've got the new version. So it is, um, it's usually pretty fast. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds, um, but usually it's not too long for your edits to show up here. And then you have um, this available on all your devices. So instead of having to um, you know, try to get my edited version off of my desktop, I can open up any device, my phone, my tablet, um, and find the edits that I've done in Lightroom um, available on any device. Awesome. So um, Lightroom, also has the option to save your edits uh, to a sidecar file or to the DNG. Um, and then if you do that, Miley will synchronize those edits as well. So if I come in here and um, I go into metadata, and I say save metadata to file, um, it's gonna write all the changes that have been made here uh, to the file or to a sidecar. Uh, and then Miley will see that and synchronize it um, with the rest of your library. So if I come over to my desktop computer, um, I can come into import here. The one thing to watch out for when you're importing it into your other computer is that it will see that display image here as if it's a new image. It's not actually a new image. So I just make sure I uncheck it. Um, you can also remove it from Lightroom if you miss one, um, but usually it's pretty obvious because it will show the edits, um, whereas the rest of the images will show just the, uh, the original raw version 
um, or JPEG, depending on what you're looking at. So if you go to import, it's going to add those. That's going to be pretty quick because there all the files are there. And then once it's done generating its previews, um, if I select all of these, right click, go to metadata and read metadata from files, it's going to look at those files. It's going to see that there's been some edits and it's going to apply them to each of the images. Now there's only one image um, that had been edited, but I think it's this one. Now it's worth noting that the, the those metadata changes that you saved to that XMP file, Lightroom can read those edits as far as the pixel changes that you've made when you take that between different computers using Lightroom. Mylio doesn't see those pixel edits. It'll read your keywords, it'll read your star ratings and other things like that. And those are also stored in that metadata XMP file, but not the physical edits. I mean, they're there, but Mylio can't read them because Mylio's editor is different from the editor that's inside of Lightroom. So that's why you have to create that display copy to see those edits inside of Mylio. Yeah, and that display copy works for a bunch of other applications as well. So I um, I primarily edit in Lightroom, but I also have Luminar and sometimes I'll edit over there. I'll edit in Photoshop. Um, I also have several of the Topaz products. And so often I will um, edit in a different app and then I'll need that underscore display image to show, um, to show the results of the edit or so, you know, because maybe I want to actually take the, the file instead of the uh, um, instead of the original and share it without having to export it. So um, one of the annoyances with Lightroom is it does not always update your preview. Um, sometimes you have to go in, go to develop, change it a little bit, and go back, and then maybe it will, maybe it won't. But that's Lightroom. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, the other thing you can do, so that's showing how you can edit in Lightroom and then send the edited copy back to Mylio. Sometimes you have a photo inside of Mylio and you want to edit it uh, in Lightroom. And for that, you can go here. And now the last thing I used was Lightroom. So it's going to show it to me here. But I can also go up here and say open with Lightroom Classic or open with and pick an editing tool of my choice. Um, and then it will come in and it will want to import that into Lightroom. So it should take just a second for it to open up the import screen. It's got the picture that I selected, hit import. And now I can come in and I can do some editing here. So I could come in and maybe crop it a little bit. And then just like I did with that, that picture of the chickadee, I'm going to take this, I'm going to add it to this publish um, service, and then I'm going to right click and hit publish now. It's going to update there. And then when we come back here, uh, we can see that it updated pretty quick and we can see that cropped version. Now, if I was just going to crop, I would do that in Mylio, but if I wanted to do um, like a, a gradient or something like that or some brushing, um, I'd probably open it up in Lightroom and do it that way. Perfect. Well, we covered a lot of information um, in a pretty quick time. Are there any questions? I don't see anything in the chat, but those who are um, participating live, you can put your comments into the chat. You can unmute and ask your questions. Um, let us know, do you use Lightroom already? Is this something that you're getting into new? And if you've had any issues, we are happy to help you walk through those. Well, are there any um, edit, editing tools inside of Lightroom that you're particularly fond of, Aaron? Um, yeah, I heavily use the brushing. So like on that particular chickadee picture, if I were to open it up and develop, I'd reset it because I don't want to be black and white. <laughs> um, so I pretty heavily use the brushing. So I'd probably come into this particular picture, start off with a little bit of a crop so I can see what it's going to look like. And then often I'll just do the auto settings just to see what it comes up with. Usually I don't like it very much. And then I go back through and change things. Um, so one of the nice things about um, Lightroom that's relatively new, I think it's been about you know, six to eight months, is the new subject selection mask. Um, that does work pretty well for birds. It's not perfect, but often it will get your bird um, masked pretty well. And so that did okay. And then I would come in and I would refine it. 
So I'll subtract out some of this, some of the tree. I don't care about the bird's, bird's legs, so I'm not gonna keep those in there. And then I might, um, might adjust the exposure a little bit on there. So I might bump up the shadows a little bit to get a little more details out of the feathers, drop some of the blacks to kind of keep my contrast pretty good, maybe increase the clarity. Um, so I might make some of those changes there. And then this right here, this picture is taken at ISO uh, 8000. So um, it's, it's not horrible for noise, but you can definitely see it um, kind of grainy in there. So I would always, with this, I'd come in, once I made some changes that I liked, I'd come in and take it to Topaz Denoise. Now it's worth mentioning when you take something to a plugin, typically Lightroom is gonna create a new file, usually a TIFF, depending on your settings. And when it comes back with those changes, you're gonna have your Lightroom copy, your original with Lightroom's edits, and then you're gonna have a new file with these save changes that you've made in the, in the plugin. Yeah, sometimes with Topaz, um, I end up adjusting these sliders quite a bit. This one doesn't look too bad. So I just probably go ahead and apply it. Um, it. Usually takes a little bit of time for it to run it, especially when I'm running off my laptop and on my desktop. Um, and then sometimes I'll, I'll go back into Lightroom after I've brought something into Topaz and I'll adjust some of the lighting as well. So I might try to bring down some of these highlights um, here. One of the hard parts about photographing chickadees is you got this black head. And so you want to show, um, you want to show some of the feather details in here. So you want to make sure your exposure isn't, isn't too low. Um, but then you also have this really bright white streak that goes through here and you want to retain feather detail there. So it's like, like with any black and white bird, there's always a bit of a challenge in making sure that, um, you don't completely blow out your highlights. Um, this one's a little bit blown out too far. Um, and then still have your, uh, um, Good feather details up on the top of the head. That's that's one of the I mean, that's one of the particular difficulties of chickadees. And then chickadees often look kind of disheveled like this, where their feathers are kind of going every way. They have a a bad feather day almost every day. <laughs> um, another thing I'd probably do with this is I'd probably do a radial gradient on my chickadee, roughly, as you try to orient it roughly in the same orientation as the bird. Um, let me shrink this down a little bit. That kind of matches the bird. And then I invert it. I don't actually want it to cover the bird. I want it to cover everything that isn't the bird. I might drop some of the highlights to kind of kind of get rid of some of this stuff. Um, maybe drop some of the shadows. Then I might uh, see what it says for auto. Oh, it's not too bad. It's a little bit yellowish. Um, do some edits there. Um, and then I usually I just continue tweaking it. Um, I do usually do most of these edits before taking it into Topaz. So I would do it on the original one and then I would take the more edited version into Topaz and then maybe do some minor tweaks after that. Um, I usually I always like to, to do a little bit of brushing on the eye um, just because it looks better that way. I usually use iris enhance for that. They don't have really colorful eyeballs, so it doesn't doesn't really matter that much. It just, I guess I'm too lazy to hit 0.35 on the exposure and then bump up the clarity by a little bit. Because the in this case, the uh increased saturation doesn't help me much. It only really makes it worse. But adding a little bit of brightness there kind of gives a little bit, draws a little more attention to the eye. And then I would probably come in here and do some brushing on the uh this part but it's going to be that's yeah that's one of those areas you probably would have wanted to hit before you took it to topaz yeah and this is mostly going to be a lost cause anyway it's just how, how light it is but usually i'll try to bring you got it down really good exposure throughout the rest of the the image there, there might be some data there that you can get back in the raw yeah it is very challenging when you have a subject that has both black and white to get detail on all of those areas. So I think you you balanced it out pretty darn well. Well, I mean, I can look at some of these other ones because I took a bunch and, and uh, often there's one that often there's one that that ends up 
looking pretty good. Like some of these ones where it doesn't have the white right by the background, it might be a little bit better looking. I haven't looked at these ones yet. Nope, that's out of focus. <laughs> um, one thing too, so right now I'm working in, in Lightroom and I don't wanna do any of my deletes in Lightroom because Mylio will fix those for me and bring them back in. So when I'm working in Lightroom and I've brought the, the photos I'm editing into a folder that's being watched by Mylio, I want to do all of my deleting in the uh, in Mylio. Otherwise, um, since I have safe delete turned on, um, Mylio will hopefully restore the file in the background um, after I delete it. <laughs> so Dorothy asks, to keep Lightroom and Mylio in sync with each other, are they both using the same folder of originals or does each app have its own copy of the originals? Um, they both, both are using the same folder. So um, in this case, if I come in here and I say, um, show an explorer, we see this is where it is. This is actually, since this is not my, um, not my main vault computer, this is actually inside my Mylio folder. Um, and then I just point Lightroom to that folder to find the images. And then if I were to come into here, um, bring this over here and, you know, Show in folder, show in explore. So we can see that this is also here in my Mylio folder. So these are these are looking at the same spot. So it's the same images, um, same spot. I don't have to duplicate my images. Um, and then I usually keep um, I usually keep my recent photos synchronized to this computer and then my desktop computer and my other vaults have all of my photos on them and just, just keep the recent ones in case I wanna do any editing um, on this computer. Very cool. Yeah, so when I use my work computer and I want to edit pictures from my Leo, I can easily pull down the originals even though they're hooked up via the cable external drive on my personal machine. I can pull those originals down on my work machine. And when I open them up on Lightroom on that computer, I don't have my catalog synced up the way Aaron does. So it does create another separate catalog that's not in sync with my main catalog. But when I do that display copy and send it back, I do get my edits back in Mylio. And I can go back and rework those edits on my work computer if I need to, but I try to do most of my Lightroom edits on my main computer, my personal computer. So yeah, and I generally, Dorothy. I generally do most of my editing on my desktop, but if I'm out traveling and don't have my desktop with me, which is the usual case if I'm traveling. Um, I uh, I don't wait till I get home to edit my pictures. I want to I want to see my pictures and I want to see them edited uh, yep. sooner rather than later. Um, this year I'm doing a photo of the day challenge, so I'm taking a picture, at least one picture a day, and then posting it on my personal Facebook. Um, and so I try to make sure that I don't get too far behind in the posting. That that part's less important than the actual taking of the photo. Um, but I try to make sure that I don't get too far behind. So when I'm out in the middle of nowhere, um, I'm still editing photos on my laptop and stuff, um, even though I may not post them for, for a day or two until I'm back into inside civilization. That's awesome. I love seeing your photos of the day. Um, really I've been trying to post more often in our community just because I see you post frequently. I was like, oh, I've got to get a post up. <laughs> it's getting the rest yeah, of us I taking pictures. I usually try to get three to four pictures a day in the community. Sometimes I can do more. Um, with it being summer, I spend a lot more time taking pictures of my kids and less time taking pictures of birds. So I end up getting a little bit less content in the community, but um, I still try to, try to get out and get bird pictures whenever I can. Awesome. All right, are there any other questions? Dorothy, did that answer your question? Did you have any follow-ups? Feel free to unmute and ask or go ahead and pop your questions into the chat. All right, are there any other uh, nuggets of wisdom that you'd like to share with us, Aaron, before we wrap up? Um, not thinking about anything about working with, with Lightroom and Mylio. I mean, they work, they work really well together. One of the, the nicest things about it that's probably been one of the most, uh, I wouldn't say re like life-changing because it's, you know, it's still computer software, but um, the, before I had Mylio, I would edit in Lightroom and then I would see my pictures and my wife would never see the pictures. Um, and so I take pictures of the kids and she might see one if I shared it. 
Um, she might say, hey, I wanted to see if any of those pictures you took were any good the other day. And I'd say, of course they were, I took them. Um, <laughs> but the uh, she would never get to see the edited versions unless she did a lot of work to get access to them. So she doesn't use my, my desktop. So she's basically on her phone uh, wanting to see those pictures. And now that I use Milio, um, I go in and I can edit the pictures of the kids. Um, all those changes go into Milio. Then they go onto her phone. So she can see all those pictures whenever. She can share those with her friends. She can look back at um, previous you know, years and stuff that used to be trapped on my desktop. So the only place to look at, at this picture would be my desktop. And if she wanted to try to find it, there was, there was no way for her to get to it. Um, so now that all those pictures are in Milio, and I've got, I've got probably a moderate sized library in Milio, I've got about 80,000 photos you know, going back over the last decade since I've, I've started you know, DSLR photography. Um, all of those pictures are accessible to her anywhere. Um, whereas before they were only accessible to me and really only if I was at home, because I did try, you know, Lightroom has their, their um, syncing with the cloud ability. And I did try doing that. There's a lot of maintenance in that because you had to manually add things to collections. They wouldn't sync automatically, or you had to use the, the new Lightroom, which has half the features of the old Lightroom. So didn't really want to use that. Um, and it was always a pain. Plus you had, you know, there was the, the previews in Lightroom. So they were not great resolution. Um, if you wanted to print something, if it was like an eight by 10, you're probably fine. But if you wanted to print something real big, then uh, it was, you know, it's going to be pretty rough for that. Um, and so it really wasn't working to, to try to maintain syncing with Lightroom, um, syncing with the cloud. I don't pay for any of the storage there. So it was just the smart previews that were syncing. Uh, Lightroom always gets stuck somewhere on a picture. So it'll always be spinning up in the corner telling you, you know, 650 pictures left to sync. And it's like, well, you're stuck on one, but it's the next one that I, I that's the one I want to see. Can't see it because it's stuck. Um, so it's been really, uh, switching to Milio has changed the way I can access my photos, the way my wife can access my photos um, substantially. And that's been, um, you know, that's been, that's been really nice. Like it's, it lets me share my photos whenever, wherever I'm at, when I'm, uh, you know, I'm out birding and I'm talking with somebody about a bird that I saw the other day, um, instead of doing what most people do. And that is open up Facebook and scroll for forever until they can find the picture that they posted, or maybe they didn't even post it and they can't even get it. Um, yeah. I could just open up Milio and say, you know, come in here. I keep all my nature photography um, in albums. And so I can just go into the album so I can say, oh yeah, I saw um, uh, Robins are boring. So we won't do one of those. And, you know, this Anna's hummingbird is uh, this one right here. This one's in the backyard and it's you know kind of always in this area. So I got a whole bunch of pictures of it sitting on these blackberry vines, um, usually in the rain, because I usually take pictures of it when I, I need to go out and take a picture, but it's raining. So I don't want to go very far. Um, that's not the same Anna Summingbird, by the way. Um, so I got a whole bunch of pictures of this this individual male Anna Summingbird from the backyard. And so if I wanted to show somebody that hummingbird that lives there, well, I can easily do that because I can come in and look at my hummingbird pictures and and see which ones are there um, are from there. Or you know, if I see a somewhat rare bird, this isn't a rare bird in most of the country, but it's a rare bird here. I can tell somebody, oh, I saw a black billed magpie. Uh, this is what it looked like. Um, you know, I guess the other option is I could just do an image search and show somebody else's picture of it. But this way I can show my picture that I took. Um, this blue winged teal is another picture. It was, it's, it's not that rare around the country, but when I took it, no one else had seen one within 30 miles in 30 days. So it was pretty rare for the area. Um, and so when people, uh, you know, people, I've met people later on who knew that I saw the teal who never met me because I reported it on eBird. And so I could show them the picture of the teal that I took there. Um, and so they could see, yes, actually there was a teal. And when they made the, the, the long trip out to try to find it, it wasn't there that it wasn't because it wasn't there. It was because they didn't find it. Um, <laughs> so it's really, it's really made it so that I can, I can share my pictures in person with people in ways that I couldn't before. Um, you know, you, typically you can't, when you're out birding, you can say, Hey, come back to my house. I've got great photos on my desktop that I'd like to show you, but can't show you here because 
I didn't bring my desktop. It's not in my, it's in my other pants pocket. Um, and, and with my Leo, I can do that. I can get everything organized and I can, you know, within seconds, bring up any picture that I want. Um, any picture that's, that's important to me, whether that's nature photography, uh, pictures of my kids, they're basically at my fingertips all the time. I can, I can access them wherever. That's awesome. And I love how you share your Milio with your wife so you guys can both have access to all of the photos. Um, that's something I haven't taken the plunge and put my husband on my account yet, but maybe at some point. And then I, do you keep most of your DSL, DSLR photos kind of sequestered in your Lightroom? Like you share them obviously with Milio, but you have also kind of that little corner that's just your DSLR photos. So it's not intermingled with all the family things. Um. Well, I take a lot of pictures of my kids that wind up in Lightroom because, you know, I go out birding a lot, but I also have a four-year-old and a six-year-old. So they're like the right, like the prime age for, for kid photography when they're, you know, they're moving around, they're doing fun things. Um, you can get cool action shots of them, um, but they're still cute. They're not like, you know, they're not, you know, more cute than teenagers, I guess. So, um <laughs> But yeah, you know, they're, they're the perfect age for that. So I take a, a ton of pictures of my kids with my, my DSLR um, and other cameras. And so those all get, go through Lightroom as well. So I don't, I don't keep anything separate. Um, typically I take pictures on my phone. I edit them in, in Mylio, not in Lightroom. Um, that's mostly because if I take a picture on my phone, I usually am not trying to do substantial editing to it. It's usually like a quick snapshot. Um, maybe I want to fix like the color or something where the white balance is off. Um, I do that in Mylio. I don't usually take that. And I do that in Mylio from my phone. Um, that's the other nice, nice thing with Mylio is if you take a picture, um, maybe you haven't had a chance to edit it in Lightroom yet and you want to show it to somebody, but uh, it doesn't look as good as you'd like because uh, it's just the raw image and the preview generated from that. So you can adjust the colors, adjust the lighting. Um, and then when you, you're back home and you have access to, uh, to a desktop or laptop, and you want to go through and do your brushing and that kind of stuff, you can do that there. Awesome. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up today. I want to say thank you again, Aaron, for joining us and sharing your workflow with us and your amazing nature photography. Um, always a joy to see that stuff. If you have any other questions for me or for Aaron, you can post those in the community and we keep an eye on that. We'll be happy to answer any follow-ups you have there. Otherwise, I want to wish you a great day. Thank you for joining us on the Miley of Photos Coffee Break. We'll see you next time.